what this night is all about. Um, and so just to begin, uh, to start with announcements before we begin in worship, again, just to remind you that we will be worshiping online this Easter Sunday. Um, we'll have our regular worship at 10 a.m. using the same link you used this evening to get on all the same information. Um, there'll also be a Easter sunrise um, opportunity as well. And this is something um, you can do by uh, going to a place in your house where you can look out a window or even go outside. If you can go in your backyard, your front porch, um, wherever you can get a, a good view if the weather's kind enough um, to just experience that Easter sunrise morning. Uh, it'll be a brief call of just sharing the Easter story and being in prayer together. And I hope you're able to join us if you're an early bird and like to be up, of course, I invite you to go out before 7 a.m. to really see the sunrise and then to join me at seven o'clock um, as we worship together in just a short time of prayer together. Um, so it's probably best just to dial in on your phone, go outside and, uh, and, and we'll share uh, in those Easter celebrations to begin the day. A community related news, um, just a reminder that if you, um, uh, when to call 911 and when to call 211. Uh, the borough is reporting a lot of people are um, unnecessarily calling 911 for things that are not a 911 emergency. Um, if you have a question or, or an issue with a COVID-19 case or something like that, that's when you call 211. Now, if it really is an extreme case and an emergency, definitely call 911, um, but did want to reiterate that as I hear um, that community need. Another need I just have found out about is that Open Door is in need of masks. I know some may be making their own masks at home as a craft project or something like that. If you are making masks, if you could let me know, Open Door would like to have uh, some masks donated. They don't have to be anything too fancy, just something that covers uh, the face. Um, and these are a need for the clients who are using Open Door services um, to make sure that they have the masks to protect themselves and protect volunteers. So uh, if you have masks and are able to donate them, you can email me or um, if you're filling out the virtual attendance form on our website, um, there's a spot there you can just add in the comment and I will see that later. Again, I, I want to thank all of you who have been giving online or have been mailing your checks in. Um, while we haven't been able to gather in person and pass the plate around, we really do thank you for those who have been able to donate in this time um, and really do appreciate your generosity in helping us uh, you know, keep going as a church and, and being the church. And while we may be distant at this time, we are um, still in, in ministry to this community. Um, we are still helping to connect people with God and, and to be in mission to our community. And so I thank you for all of your support. Finally, like I mentioned, um, we do have uh, the virtual attendance form. There's the link there. Um, unfortunately, the, Zoom doesn't like the, the direct link to the form that I was putting up earlier. I, I don't know if it's a security thing or what. Um, but the best way to get to it, easiest way, is if you're on your computer, to go to our website, uh, to the, the live stream tab, or to type in the address you see listed there. You'll see the connect or virtual attendance form, a link for that there, a button. You click on that, it'll take you to the form. You can fill that out. If you have a prayer request that you'd like to lift up this evening that we can share on Sunday, you can put that there, or even a prayer request that you would just want me to know about, but don't want shared. Just let me know um, if you want it shared or not, but you can submit your prayer request in that way um, and share any other information you'd like to share with me this evening. But this time now I ask that we prepare our hearts and minds as we enter into worship.
at this time now, I invite you, if you do have a candle and you haven't already lit it, to light your candle um, as we continue through this service, as we uh, go down the road that Jesus traveled on the road to the cross and, ex and explore and meditate on what Jesus has done for us. And uh, so we'll be going through the scriptures. We'll be singing songs appropriate for this evening. Uh, we'll even have some special music. Um, you will be muted throughout the service. If you are reading, though, we will make sure that you're unmuted uh, for your reading so that you might share with us. And I just ask that you be just in an attitude of prayer and reflection as we move now through this story, the story of Jesus' sacrifice for us. And as we begin this journey, I ask you to join me in our opening prayer. God of our salvation, who are we that you are mindful of us, that you would save us? You know our sins, our shortcomings, our downfalls, and our mistakes, and yet you still love us. We bow in reverence and humility at such overwhelming love and mercy. Thank you for grace that abounds, for love that supersedes, and mercy that looks beyond faults and sees our needs. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, beginning verse 36. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee mm -hmm. and, the, Somebody's talking. and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, my father, if this cannot pass, unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled.
is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin reached a decision. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. The chief priest accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the feast to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews, asked Pilate, knowing it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews, Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed, asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified.
Our next scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, beginning at verse 26. As they led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine, vinegar, and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. Behold, behold the wood of the cross on which is hung our salvation. Oh, come, let us adore. Unless the great we shall meet upon the ground and sky, it shall remain but the same. Yeah. 
has borne our tears, was wounded by our sin, and yet he was not his mouth that we might reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, beginning at verse 45. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this man was God's son.
that were an offering far too small. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life. This time now I invite you to extinguish your candles. And I invite you to pray with me now. As we go into the dark, we know and trust that the light is never extinguished. We hold on to the hope and promise that God will never leave us. Until we join together again, we will hold fast to this promise. Amen. Well, before we go from this place, we're going to depart in silence, but we're going to do that in an interesting way since we're on an online format. I'm going to invite you all just to stay muted and to be in an attitude of prayer. Lynn Beach is going to be playing her violin for us, and I'm going to invite you for a couple minutes of just silent prayer and meditation. Uh, once the music has ended, I will end the meeting, and I will see you all on Easter. But let us now take this time just to rest in this place, to be in an attitude of prayer as we listen to the music and as we pray together. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you all now and forever.